I'd like to talk to you about oracles, what they are and how to use them. And the, the, most, important, the most important part I'd like to talk, to talk about is that oracles are uh, full of trade-offs. It is actually a game of trade-offs. Uh, you cannot build oracles that uh, are super reliable on every area that you need. Okay, why doesn't it work for me now? Oh, cool. So, uh, what are oracles? Uh, in mythology, oracles are uh, some magical creatures that tell you uh, the truth. They usually require some kind of sacrifice or payment. Uh, and the, the truth is sometimes also given in riddles. In our context, oracles are smart contracts. And uh, what is very important to me in particular is that we, we talk about oracles that are on-chain because only on-chain oracles give you the guarantees of the actual chain. And when you have an application that needs oracles, it needs to be on the same chain that the oracle uh, is built on. So oracles are a doorway to the external world. And it actually does not matter whether we are talking about uh, data from the real world or from another chain. As long as you have something that is reliable and uses the guarantees of the underlying network to give you the, the Oracle data, that means that's Oracle. So we are putting the, the data on chain, we, I am, <laughs> good that I have this. Uh, I am with Chronicle and we are, uh, we are building oracles. Our main product is, uh, of course, MakerDAO oracles, but we are, the, the, they were built especially for, uh, for Maker, but we are making them available to everyone. So it is, it is, very important to, to know how the oracles work. There are different ways oracles can work. And let's uh, leave, a little, leave uh, aside the on-chain part for a moment. But the off-chain part is also very important. There are different ways to populate the data into, uh, into the smart contracts. You can have uh, some, uh, some single entity that uh, changes the data, but how reliable is that? You can have multiple entities that uh, collect the data from the chain, uh, from, from off-chain or from a different chain, and then put it into the contract. Uh, so how do you know that the data uh, is real? Uh, and that's, that's actually one of the, the, the things about blockchain applications in general, that the underlying layer of Ethereum, for example, is a trustless one, yeah. But everything we build on it is not necessarily trustless. You need some kind of assumptions and some kind of trade-offs. You need to remember that you need to put the trust somewhere. And when it comes to oracles, it's putting the trust in the... the entities that are supplying the data on chain so for example our oracles have uh, 25 feeds so these are the entities that provide provide the data they collect it from uh, from for example exchanges when it comes to um, price data then they produce a, um, a special message they sign it with their key and then they uh, broadcast it so someone else can permissionlessly put it into the oracle, provided that, that they have 13 out of 25 uh, signatures. So that's a property specific to MakerDAO, for example, because uh, all of that is included in the risk model of, of the application that is using the oracles. Uh, Let's go here. Oh, and that's one thing I would like to... Oh, it's working. Cool. So we'll get there. Great. 
Yeah, bro, bro, great, great. So, as I said, it's a game of trade-offs. Uh, these are the mythical oracles, and uh, we want them to be on-chain. And uh, we, as, a, as an oracle builder, are, are bridging the gap between the real world or other, other um, chains into, uh, into the, the blockchain that we want. And, as I said, I work for Chronicle. Uh, so there are different types of uh, systems. You can have one, uh, one entity that does the collection, signing and storing. You can have multiple ones, but this uh, laser, oh, uh, this is expensive. So if you have multiple entities doing that and all of the validation happens on chain, that's, that's okay, but that's expensive. And uh, the gas prices won't get very, uh, uh, lower on L1, for example. Uh, so you can have something like that. You can have multiple entities signing and only one that is doing the storing, which is uh, more optimal for the, for the gas. But then do you trust this person that they are doing their job? So I think this part needs to be trustless. This part needs to, needs to allow for anyone to be able to store and, and update the Oracle, provided that they collect all the signatures uh, from the... From the entities that the protocol trusts. So this is one of the most important things I'd like to uh, put across, that anyone claiming that they have solved the Oracle problem is full of assumptions. Like this is, might be a different word, but uh, assumptions are something that anyone, everyone has to make. To, to actually be able to provide an Oracle service. Uh, and there is a lot of risk in... Uh, is it the, the last date, latest version of the presentation? Oh, anyway, anyway. So there's a lot of risk, and you have to take the risk into account when you build a system. You have to, when you build a, your uh, risk model, uh, you need to know exactly about every part of this, uh, every step of this uh, oracle, where, where this oracle data came from. So you need to know about how the data is validated. For example, our oracles, our feeds, when they collect data from multiple exchanges, we make sure that the price model, so the, the, the origins of this data are reliable. We are not using FTX anymore for obvious reasons. Uh, and even if we did, it's not really a big problem because we require 13 signatures and 13 valid values. And then on chain, the values are being, uh, the, the median value is being selected. So any outlier, if someone is lying, if someone is saying that the price is super high or super low, comparing to the other 12 feeds, that would mean that their uh, message is unreliable and we are ignoring them. We are taking the median. So that's one part, that's on the feed side. Then uh, you need to, figure out a good and reliable way on the contract side to validate the data. Uh, so actually we are using, also using the median value for, uh, on the contract side. So off-chain, the, uh, the feeds collect data from multiple exchanges, take a median out of that, they sign this message, they broadcast it over to everyone actually, so anyone can use that, but someone who needs to update the Oracle can take this, uh, this, these messages, compose a transaction, send the transaction uh, to the contract, and the contract will again choose a value that is uh, a median. Uh, also, a very good question to ask is, who is permissioned or is it permissionless, who can be a feed, who can give the signatures, and who can be doing the updating. If, for example, uh, only one entity or, or an, maybe an 
unknown entity can be doing the uh, updating of an oracle, that means that there's something fishy, like maybe that's not a good thing, or maybe you like it. Maybe your system is robust enough that it will take into account this actual risk of the, the update strategy of, uh, of this oracle. But what is the biggest value of our oracles is that we rely on very reputable projects, reputable uh, actors in the whole ecosystem to be, to be the feeds. Uh, we are not letting just anyone to be able to compose a signed message with a price. We validate them, we make sure that they, they are using proper uh, data models, it can be all calculated, and we are actually enforcing them to not only provide the final value that we are going to put on chain, we are enforcing uh, providing the, uh, the source data that they use, like this data came from Binance, this data came from Co Co Coinbase or whatever, this data came from a contract, and then we check that this is uh, this is va this is valid, and we independently query the the exchanges all the time, and so we can compare how big of an offset they have from what should have been at this timestamp the the price of an asset, uh, and of course uh, we could say that we why do we even need oracles for something that is already on chain like prices from Uniswap. Well, first of all, that would be very expensive or more expensive to actually calculate the oracle value or like during the, um, during the transaction that you want to actually do. But we, we are also making sure that the feeds use their own nodes uh, and that they use reliable data and that they validate the on-chain attestations that they have uh, through not only a single provider but multiple ones and we can see if there's a discrepancy there's something wrong so we are not going to publish this message and the same goes for l2 data we encourage or the feeds to run their own node. If they don't, we require them to use multiple providers. So then again, we can check what, uh, how valid and how reliable this data is. Uh, so the thing I think is uh, something I would like to leave you with is always know your, your oracles. Always make sure that the Oracle provider is fully transparent the whole way from, from the start, from the exchange or from another place that they are taking the, uh, the price or another, I don't know, temperature or like, I don't know, grain cost or something. Uh, from the beginning, through the whole process, let it be documented, uh, let it it should be transparent, it should be available online, uh, and only then you can actually make sure that your users do not get pawned, let's say, uh, by the Oracle system. There was a case, for example, when the whole Luna thing happened, uh, that some of the Oracle providers had a... it was a minimum price for a stable coin. So even though the stable coin was way, way, way below the minimum price, the Oracle still reported uh, some kind of arbitrary number. What's up with that? Like that's not reliable data and you cannot make these kind of assumptions. So unless you actually see the code that is running the, the system to provide Oracles for you, you are not sure what's happening. So you always need to know every step of that the data came through to, to, to be able to build a system that will not rag your users. Uh, 
this is a link to our Twitter, so feel free to uh, follow us. And of course, we are, we are looking for uh, developers, backend developers. We are doing mostly Go. Uh, we are looking also for smart contract developers and the DevOps, pe DevOps people. So if you know someone that's looking for a very good and exciting job with a great team as ours, then uh, lead them to this Twitter account and they can follow the breadcrumbs to, to find us. And uh, I think that's it. Do I have any questions? There's a question. Um, so you, uh, your, your Oracle is specific to Maker. Um, what was the decision to build it from scratch and make a custom build for Maker instead of taking Chainlink or any other Oracle service? So the Oracles were custom built for Maker because when you are dealing with such a complex system and uh, apparently a lot of money, you don't want to be using someone that you do not control, like we and or someone that is being controlled by an unknown entity. They have a multisig uh, that we don't know who who's owning those keys. So it's not really a reliable source for MakerDAO. And our oracles, the the trust factor, the trust assumption is not on any piece of technology per se. It's on the reputable feeds, so the projects or people that were voted in by the maker community. And they are, we made sure, like maker make, made sure that they were reliable enough to trust them. So this is where the trust goes to. And if we use some other provider, like there's no way the maker community would be able to enforce or like, uh, take someone off the list of allowed feeds. Um, so would you say it's recommendable for the larger lending protocols in DeFi to have a similar Oracle design? Um, so would you say that Aave and Compound should also have their own Oracles or? Well, not necessarily their own Oracles, but Oracles that are fully transparent and uh, you need to, like, those big projects need to think what is good enough for us. Uh, if you are fine with Chainlink and you trust Chainlink, then fine, that's okay. But if you want something transparent, uh, and but you still do not want to run it yourself because that's too much work or you won't be able to, to gather enough uh, feeds that are reliable, then you go to a project the, and and on the, in the system that actually is based on full transparent and permissionless uh, operation, even though there's there's always because that's the trade-off. There's always some trust factor that you need to 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 know about and put it somewhere. But it's better that it's a, a community-based effort to validate that and not one entities. Yeah. Do, do, do you think that price manipulations is something that Oracle vendors should solve or the underlying platform? For, for example, what happened in Mango? Stuff like uh, or, or maybe specifically, do you have like your, I mean, like in the Oracle, in the Maker Oracle, or in general, do you work on some algorithms to try and detect price manipulation, or do you see it as someone else's so problem? So, one of the ways to detect price manipulation if, if you, is if you have someone that is an outlier that will be yeah. filtered out Not by me. median. But yeah. uh, the price model is also very important. You cannot take the price data from a um, pool that is very shallow. You cannot take it from a place yeah. that is not trustworthy. Like even yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about what happened, for example, for AVAX, right? It's like a top 20 token. It was a real price manipulation, right? The price was like that on Coinbase, Binance, everywhere. But obviously, I mean, it was still a manipulation. And the question, whether do you think 
But what know, constitutes an invalid price? That's something yeah, you have yeah, to. That, that, that's the. But that's a question specific for every uh, every individual application. It's it's very hard to generalize this because. Uh, Sometimes you can get a false positive for a price manipulation, it's like uh, this locked-in minimum price for an oracle was actually a way to uh, to make sure that there's no price manipulation. Because how could a stable coin, coin go to zero? Well, that's not possible, uh, and the, and then it, it happens. So they made an assumption, and the wrong one apparently. Uh, so. These are the questions you need to ask yourself when you are picking or building an oracle for your protocol. It needs to be factored in, factored in uh, to your risk model. So the short question, it depends. <laughs> uh, answer, yeah. Anybody has any other questions? Okay. So thank you, I hope it was good for you.